Hello, everybody. And I'm thinking I have everybody. Am I in the right place tonight, guys? Oh, it's the last week's debacle. It has been a day and a half, let me tell you. So goodness only knows what's going to happen tonight. Um, okay, now I've even lost my, I lost all my notes about five o'clock this afternoon. I had this whole show scripted out. I had all the notes. I had all the prices. I had all the percentages. I had everything I needed to talk to you about tonight. I had a thunderstorm, a massive thunderstorm, and everything just went crazy. And when I restarted my computer, everything, everything I was working on today is gone. <sighs> Never mind. Hello, Chief Skaters. Welcome to our channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Kath Armstrong, creator of the Chief Skates Club, where our goal is to live life get free, cashed up and laughing, even on bad days. <laughs> like today, Paul Wayne even had a bad day today. He came home and I said, how was your day? And he oh, terrible. And he never says that. He just says, oh, it was all right. I did this, this and this. So everyone's had a bad day today. If you are in the Geelong... Melbourne outer western suburbs area I do hope that you didn't get blown away or flooded I'm hoping that um, Karen McKenzie is okay I know we have a few members over that side of town we had massive thunderstorm massive thunderstorm lots of thunder just rolled and rolled and rolled we didn't get a lot of rain but two suburbs over torrential downpours so um, Beverly's waiting for the storm to hit in the Blue Mountains yeah lots of them I don't mind the thunder I don't mind the rain it's the lightning I don't like and only because lightning starts fires in this time of year we're in fire season and Maureen missed it wow did it go around you Maureen wowzers and Veronica says it's just coming to Sydney. Okay. And Jess W. Hello, Jess. I think you're new. We had that storm around 10 p.m. last night. Mm, yeah. Did it cool everything down, though? So what I wanted to do is just... Actually, I just want to take the humidity away. It is so humid. Look at my hair. It's just frizz. Nothing will, nothing, um, will fix it. All right. And Delaney says, oh, really? Oh, we had massive, massive storms and all around us. So we're here and then it just sort of went every suburb around us. Looking, we were looking, I was watching on the radar and it was just, we were like the little green bit in the middle and everything else was yellow and red and dark blue. And I, oh, my goodness. And Mrs. Dillagath says, Storm's approaching bomb. Joy hasn't had rain. Yeah, down at Avalon. Well, that's not too far, is it? Okay. It, was just, it wasn't so hot here today. It was pretty good here today. I think it only got to about 30, which was quite nice. Okay. So I'm going to have to wing it. Apologies if I get lost because... Oh, I'm so so upset I had all these really good notes for you so if I find them I will put them I'll have to redo the research put them in the description box below now on that note if you are not already a subscriber to our channel hit the subscribe button guys because we only need 34 more subscribers and then we draw the dehydrator 34 more how many people we've got 66 people watching if everyone Got a friend to subscribe? We could draw it tonight. How's that? How would that be? I would be doing a happy dance to get it out of my craft room. I would and know that someone was um, making good use of it because this is peak dehydrating time, guys. Summer, summer fruits, the apricots, the peaches, the nectarines, the plums, the grapes, the cherries, the mangoes, bananas. And you've got the tomatoes, um, celery. What else do I dehydrate? Spring onions. All those things can be dehydrated. So, hello, Gloria. 
Um, my Jess says that's a good talking point, always back up your data. Well, mine is actually set to auto save because I use OneNote and it should auto save. But whatever this earth shattering, house moving bang did, everything went black and everything went black. Everyone's AJ was working, Tom was working, I was working. And it just went um, crazy and big shutters and whatever and everything went black and when to oh, probably five, six seconds, power came back on, but everything was gone. So I use OneNote and it does back up automatically, which is one reason why I love OneNote. Um, Barb says, you're a fountain of knowledge. Thank you, Barb. Um, plus, we can all chip in with how prices are in the area. Hannah would be thrilled to give away the dehydrator if it was tonight, especially. Yes, she would. Absolutely. Well, I can tell you that um, prices for Melbourne in December on average rose 9%. But things like cheese went up 24%. Milk went up 14%. Butter went up um, 13%. Meat depending on what it was. And I noticed that in the survey they had chicken, lamb and pork. They didn't have beef. Because we all know beef is just like a luxury these days, isn't it? So prices are really, really going up everywhere. And like I said last week, do not stop. Just don't stop stockpiling. Don't stop building your pantry. Don't stop shopping. You can't afford to because the tin of snails this week might be $2 and you'll go, oh, I don't need it this week. Next week you need it and it's $3.50. Buy what you need and use and use what you buy, but don't leave gaps in your pantry. Okay. All righty. Now, what was I going to say? Ah, thanks, Barb. It's really frizzy. You can see close up. It's really, really frizzy. Um, it's so frizzy, it's not doing anything. All right. So bear with me because I really want to talk about this. I realized eh, a couple of weeks ago, actually, when I was sort of browsing the shops while Tom was shopping because I go with him. When he goes to do his shopping, I just tag along. And um, I sort of realized that yeah, things are getting pricey. Prices were going up every week. Something had gone up. And it was, it was actually really starting to impact my grocery budget. And I'm really conscious of the grocery budget now because I'm doing the shopping back to doing that weekly replace what we use shop. I don't want the shelves to run down. I really miss my yearly shopping, I'll tell you. So I was really conscious that the budget's $3.75 a month. I haven't increased it. It's the same as it was last year. We will just have to make do. And I noticed things were just going up. And I realized that over that first couple of weeks of January, if I wasn't very, very careful, it would be really, really easy to go over budget and not by just a little bit, but by a lot. And just on things that I normally wouldn't think about putting in the trolley. Now, we don't do extravagant things. I don't buy expensive cheeses. We don't buy expensive meat. We don't drink soft drinks. Well, the others do, but they pay for it out of their mad money. We don't have fancy cereals. I don't do packaged meals and snacks and things like that. Because, you know, what do I buy? I buy ingredients because ingredients give you options. But just little things that are normal to us were going to put me over budget. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I, I don't want to increase the grocery budget. I could if I absolutely had to. But, and this is just, this is just me, I could if I absolutely had to. But we have other things that we want to do with our money. So 
sticking to the grocery budget so that we can do those other things later in the year is really quite important to me. So I've been thinking for a couple of weeks, I've been thinking, racking my brain, making notes, jotting down prices and working stuff out. And there's three things I've been doing that have, have absolutely helped over the last couple of weeks. One of them is stretch the meat, stretch the chicken, stretch the water, stretch the power, um, stretch, the, excuse me, stretch the fuel, um, sticking to the meal plan, shopping the sales, freezing extra serves for freezer night. Now, one thing I have been doing is usually probably four nights a week, there's four of us in the house. If Hannah comes, then there's five, four, six nights. Sometimes um, she will have a friend come. And so then there's... Um, six of us, four, yeah, six of us for that many nights. So my meals go up and down. But what I've been doing is making sure my recipes, I always get six serves out of a recipe. Now, if someone's plate looks a bit skimpy, too bad. There's cucumbers and lettuce. They can fill up. But nobody's going hungry. I'm not starving them, really, I'm not. But I'm making sure I get six serves out of each meal and at least one, usually two, are going into the freezer for freezer meals. Now, if you're a member and you download my meal plan, you will have noticed that I have deliberately slotted in this year freezer meals. Usually on a Saturday night because it's a weekend and who wants to be slaving in the kitchen preparing a meal, even an easy meal on a Saturday night? You know, and usually on a Saturday, we've had a decent lunch, so we don't need a big dinner. So freezer meals I've slotted in. That's saving some of the grocery budget because I'm not using all of the food to make another meal. It's working so far. We'll see how, see what happens halfway through the year and then at the end of the year, if it still works, if it does, I'll keep it up. I've always had freezer meals because they are convenient, but this is a deliberate planning, slotted in on a Saturday night, freezer meals. I just pull them out and everyone, who everyone can go and pick their own and warm them and eat them. That I think will make a big difference. Not so much in saving me $50, but it will certainly stop a lot of waste. It will certainly stop a lot of unnecessary eating of dinners for lunch, if that makes sense. And it will help stretch what we have to last a bit longer. I've, we all know how to stretch meat. You cut it thinner, you... Um, add rice to it or add oats to mince or add TVP to mince. You can add beans or lentils to mince. My, my go-to for a long time was um, mince and baked beans. And I would whiz the baked beans in the food processor so they look like mince and tip them into the mince and cook it all up. Now, it adds extra fibre and protein and I think potassium in baked beans. Baked beans are very, very good for you. And it stretched the mince. One of my recipes, refrigerator lasagna, if you go into the recipe file and um, in the search do refrigerator lasagna, uses baked beans to stretch it. You can get two for the price of one pretty much, um, two massive lasagnas for the price of one. It's a great, baked beans are a great stretcher. Um, black beans are good but any bean is good if you can cook it or use the tins if you want to and add them to a dish when i do tacos a little bit of mint it's usually about i usually use one jar of mints and a tin of black beans and a tin or two depending on how many are having tacos of baked beans into the tacos 
taco mix and it works really really well now i just lost something i had saw it here and that's gone Ooh. yep so chicken when i buy chicken we have chicken fillets i'm trying to use if they're really big i try to use one depending on what it is we're having so if i'm doing a curry i'll use one really big chicken fillet and it is cut into small dice, small dice. Little bits through the curry look like a lot because it's a lot of little pieces. It's purely playing with their minds. They say, see lots of little bits and think they're getting a lot. It's the same weight in chicken. It's just instead of one big chunk, they're getting lots of little chunks. But it just makes them feel better because they think they're getting more. It's really messing with their brain but isn't that what mothers do um we're eating lots of salads and we're using i'm really conscious of portion control so remember your piece of meat size of the palm of your hand if it's steak or something like that steak or chicken 180 to 200 grams max per serve that's it I'm being really conscious of those things. I'm also really conscious of the fact that we still like our Sunday roast, but it is really expensive. So instead of buying the leg of lamb and paying 25 or 30 or more dollars for it, because some of them are quite big these days, they're monster things. And yes, they do. We do get a lot of meals out of them, but that's a big hit to your grocery budget in one one go lamb chops i've been trimming the fat off them taking the bone out and cooking them baking them in the oven slicing them putting them on the plate it's just like roast lamb mint sauce and gravy roast potato it's a roast dinner i had lamb chops in the freezer which is what gave me the idea to do it i don't know why i didn't think about doing it ages ago but it worked and it doesn't take as long to cook. So that works. Little things like that. I got some marked down rump steak um, last week. And it was oh, it's about $7 or something. It had to be used that day. It's about $7.70 or something ridiculous, which is why I bought it. And I brought it home and yeah, I dried it off and I baked it and then I sliced it and we had it with gravy and mustard and it was good roast beef dinner. It worked. So last week when I said you needed to be a bit more creative, you still need to be a bit creative. Just think outside the box. Try and do something that you wouldn't normally do. It's fun but it gives you something new, a new way of saving. But it's not just the meats that we're stretching. We're stretching everything. Water. Now, I always catch the shower warm-up warm -up water in a bucket. That water would go into the washing machine, use it to flush the toilet, water the plants. But you know what I was thinking? It is perfectly good potable, drinkable water. The bucket is clean. The bucket is clean. So I will fill the kettle with it. I can wash veggies in it and then put the water out on the garden. There's lots of ways we can stretch our water. Little things like that. Use it for a quick brushing of the teeth. A little bit. Put some in the glass, brush your teeth. They are all things that will stretch your water. Freeze it and use it as ice blocks. Same with power, stretching your power. Power bills are really expensive and they are impacting, that's going to impact our grocery budget because we can't live without power. In 2023, it's really difficult to live without power. We need power for just about everything. So, Look at ways you can save and stretch your power. 
don't put the lights on of an evening until it's absolutely necessary make sure you turn everything off at the wall the tv the don't leave things plugged in don't have more than one light on in a room little things like that will make a difference is it going to stop your power bill from going up no but it means you won't be paying more than you need to the other thing is fuel now i know it's come down in price but it's still expensive still expensive so think about your fuel if you're driving do you drive to work do you absolutely need to drive to work can you carpool with someone and share the cost can you get the bus or the train work out if it's cheaper to do that because sometimes it might not be do you go out every day for one or two things instead of combining trips try combining trips i go out once a week I go out once a week and I do everything I need to do on that trip. Now, if it's, and I do a loop this way and a loop this way and divide up my things and some things I might have to wait till next week to do them. But I'm not going, I try to stick within about a mm, five kilometer radius of home because diesel is really expensive. Diesel is really expensive. I do not want to go broke just for driving around. Meal plan. I've been sticking to the meal plan. <laughs> it helps to stick to the meal plan. If you take the time to do it, you might as well stick to it, folks. It doesn't mean that you can't flip it up and make it different if you want to. But sticking to your meal plan helps. Now, it's easy for me to stick to my meal plan because the pantry is full. I know that though I did the meal plan up in... November last year I know that everything that I need to prepare those meals is in the pantry because the pantry is always stocked that is another benefit to keeping your pantry full you can meal plan and be confident that you won't need some random ingredient and have to run out to the shops shop the sales well we all do that anyway freeze your extra serves I've covered that um what else? Can't remember. See, I really needed those notes. Okay, let me zip over and see what the comments are. Um, oh, we've got 89 people watching. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited. Um, 89 people. That's really good. Eve's preserving. That's another thing you can do. Look, I say grow your own and people, you must get sick of me saying that, but it's really important. Last week I made tzatziki. The only bought thing in that dip was the salt. I made, I moved the yogurt. The cucumber, the lemon and the garlic all came from our garden. Now, to buy that dip, this is one of the figures I had for you, to buy that dip was about $3.30. I estimated it cost me 30 cents to make it because I had to make the yogurt. So $3, $3 I kept in our grocery budget by taking five minutes to make that dip using vegetables that grow like crazy in the garden anyway they're so easy to grow i do virtually nothing to them other than water them is it worth it do you think i do because that had me then thinking well it took me five minutes to save three dollars so that works out to around 36 dollars an hour that's not that's not bad that's not a bad earnings is it it pays to do these things. And if you're not convinced, work out the cost benefit to you so that you know that you're not wasting your time because not everything we do does save us money. It might be something that makes our life much, much better. It might be something that is much better for our health. 
but not necessarily cheaper than something you can buy. You can buy bread cheap at the supermarket. It costs a little bit more to make it, but your homemade bread is much nicer and much healthier. So you weigh up the difference. And generally, even though the initial cost might be more, the benefits will balance that out over time. So Eve is preserving. She was able to buy boxes of tomatoes, $4 for 10 kilos. Woohoo! Punnets of blueberries at 29 cents. I was excited when I got them for a dollar last week. 15 kilo box of bananas for $10. Well done, Eve. You will be preserving like crazy. Um, I don't like shopping either. I don't like grocery shopping. I'm not a fan of shopping full stop, but grocery shopping, no. Kerry's cooking tomatoes into pasta sauce. Um, there you go. Tin pineapple. Maureen bought it 99 cents last time, $1.50 now. Ouch. We use a lot of pineapple. We go through five trays of pineapple a year. So what's that? 60 cans. We use a lot of pineapple. Um, uh, Tega made sun-dried tomatoes from her harvest. Um... Oh, wow. How come, okay, hi, Kylie. How come you can get Victorian lamb legs for $7.99 a kilo in Brisbane? With all those transport costs on them, we can't get them for half that. $16.99, I saw it was on sale this week. $16.99 for a leg of lamb a kilo. I was hoping that it would come and be cheaper for Australia Day, but it doesn't look like it's going to down here anyway. Um, wow, I was, oh, I'm so jealous, I am so, it's my favourite roast is lamb, oh, oh, right, okay, so guys, I'm still reading, um, Tegan always adds red lentils, red lentils to mints, yep, um, I've been picking a handful of strawberries and a handful of raspberries. The raspberries are just about the second flush is just about to come on every morning and putting them in the freezer. And when I get enough, I will make jam with them. That will be family jam because they're our homegrown berries. But, oh, my gosh. Um, oh, Karen, are you okay? Oh, lightning's scary. I don't like lightning. Um, okay. Okay. Sorry, guys. Uh, <laughs> you're still listening to me. That's dedication, Karen. That's dedication. Um, Joy says, should they have a cheap petrol station near you? Look, guys, for fuel, 7-Eleven app, check out your auto club, RACV, NRMA, RACQ or whatever they are, RAC, whatever they are. They will hmm, often have a discount too that is, in, is on top of your standards Woolworths or Coles or whatever discount. So check those out too. Now, the RACV one is a bit of a fiddle in terms of you've got to have the app on your phone and then you have to get the um, QR code thing so that the guy at the servo can um, scan it. But you can only do it as you're getting fuel pretty much because it only lasts for 15 minutes and then you've got to start from scratch and it's a bit of a pain. But five cents a litre is five cents a litre. Now the NRMA one sort of works the same way, but their discounts aren't as good. You get five cents off premium fuels, but only three cents off your regular fuels. 
for the NRMA and I can't tell you what the others are off the top of my head because I can't remember. Um, but use those things for your fuel. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I don't, um, I don't like having all my information out in the, as, you know, as much as I can, I like to control as much as I can, but that's a lot of money. An extra five cents a litre is a lot of money. So it's worth doing it. Um, hailing at the bottom of the Blue Mountains. Um, I think your thumb's not black, it's just you're probably choosing the wrong veggies and I know that sounds weird, the wrong veggies and the wrong way to go them, grow them. Um, I think it was, hmm, who was it, one of the cheap skaters on here, uh, Kathleen maybe, can't remember, that's awful isn't it? could never grow anything in the ground. And I've gone, well, just try pots and bags and see how you go. And her photos of her garden are amazing in pots and bags where in the ground it was hopeless. There's, try something, but there's nothing wrong with growing spring onions and herbs. They're all essential to um, good cooking, aren't they? Uh, Jane had a banana mango smoothie and the banana came out of the garden with the mango. She used powdered milk. It would have been nice to hot. Oh, it's a horrible day here. There we go. Karen makes cottage cheese each week and saves $5. And cottage cheese is so easy to make. So, so simple. We've got a recipe on the website. Um, so, so um, easy to make. You do need to take time to be frugal. Um, you've got a choice of what you do with your time. We all have the same 24 hours in the day. It's how we use them, what we do with them that makes a difference. If we choose to be frugal and we choose to make our tzatziki instead of spending the $3.30 plus the fuel to get there and your time, then we're ahead. Not everyone thinks like that though. Someone would think, oh, it's going to take me 20 minutes to make that dip. Well, it's not 20 minutes. It might be 20 minutes in total, but it's only five minutes hands-on time because you've got to let the cucumber salt and drain. It takes 15 minutes. You can do other things in that time, can't you? So it's all how we it's how we look at it. It's how we look at it. And I don't look at spending 20 minutes to make a dip to save three dollars as ridiculous or a waste of time couldn't be bothered doing that it's easier to just buy it it's actually not like i said you've got to get dressed you've got to put shoes on at least shoes and clothes on you've got to go to the shop you've got to find your way to the dairy cabinet hunt through all the things grab your dip line up to pay for it and our coals have moved to our coals have moved to so many they're just about all self-serve checkouts now i don't mind the really long ones that are like normal registers they're actually quite good you can zip through those quite quickly but you've still got to line up for them so it actually takes longer than the 20 minutes and more effort and costs more so it's thinking it through from the start to the end so that you can know exactly what you're doing um Delaney has been dividing up breakfast fruit and yogurt into serving size jars rather than dipping into a large beer. Yep, I love chia. I love chia pudding. Yum, yum, yum. My favourite, I was talking to Wendy about this yesterday, my favourite, chia with pomegranate juice, put it in the fridge overnight. Oh, my gosh, it is so good. I was able to get blueberries last Friday. Thursday, Friday, last Friday, I was able to get blueberries for a dollar a punnet. 
which is just wonderful. Now, I could only carry 18 punnets, so that's all I got. But as soon as I got them home, I turned them into jam. So I made, um, we've got six 500 gram jars of blueberry jam. We've only got five because it was so good. Everybody ate it. Um, it was really delicious. But because I was making the tzatziki, I had a big batch of Greek yogurt too. So for my breakfast every morning, I've had yogurt in the bowl with a teaspoon of the blackberry jam stirred in and then a handful of what's left of the blackberry, uh, blackberries, blueberries over the top of it. Oh, my gosh, so, so good. Absolutely loving it. Absolutely loving it. Maureen's making butter, butter and more butter. I know the feeling. Um, Jane's growing pineapples and she's going to plant the tops tomorrow. Yay. Um, check your prices, Barb. Always check your prices. That'll, um, ooh, Foodworks Deer Park. So that's over the western suburbs of Melbourne, ladies. Legs of lamb, $9.95 a kilo. That's a great deal. I will check out Foodworks here and see the prices. I have one just over the road. Uh, yeah, butter's gone up 14%. Um, went up 14% in December. It's gone up more since then. Um, okay. um, all right. Beverly says, Petrol's dollar sixty in Sydney. That's not bad. Um, all right. Hi, Annabelle. Has anyone made roasted diced pumpkin and dehydrated? No, I haven't roasted it and dehydrated it. Um. I think you could roast it and put it in oil with a little herb. Now, I use, um, when I'm roasting potato or potato, pumpkin, sweet potato, whatever, I use, I think they're called, it's Master Foods seasoning sachets, and they were given to me. I didn't buy them. They were given to me. That's so good. And they've got um, pretty much Australian bush herbs in them. And they're really delicious and they would be nice, but you'd roast your potato and then let it cool and then put it in the oil and it should keep for a, a roasted pumpkin and it should keep for a, a while in the fridge. It won't keep forever though. Um, but I've not tried to dehydrate it. I do dehydrate pumpkin though. I dehydrate very, very paper thin slices of raw pumpkin and then I will cook it and mash it and dehydrate the mash too. To, and then I powder them. Um, Trina's got zucchini and button squash going crazy. Okay, cheap cream for anyone in Melbourne's southeastern suburbs. Um, Save more at um, Noble Park. Had, over the weekend, had... Um, Four litres for three dollars. Is that right, Maureen? Have I got that all three litres? No, four litres for three dollars. Um, three litres for four dollars. Three litres for four dollars. Can't remember. It was one of those anyway. It's pretty cheap. Um, that might still be in their safe moors on Princess Highway, um, Springvale, Noble Park on the highway, almost opposite um, Sandown. So um, have a look. They do have a Facebook page. Have a look and see if they still have it. My NQR never had the cream. So when the NQR had the cream, there was none at my NQR. Um, uh, Um, 
you can use to make yogurt you can use your dehydrator but why would you because you're running it it costs it takes power when you can just sit in a thermos and leave it overnight same with people that do it in their instant pot again why would you people that do it in the slow cooker why would you you are using power to do that you just need to put it in the thermos and leave, cover it with water leave it overnight it will be fine um, you don't need to use electricity to make yogurt um, to me that's gimmicky it's a gimmicky thing um, I don't see the sense in it if it's going to cost you more it's adding to the cost of your yogurt you might as well I don't know it's it's just not worth it and with the price of power now it's just not worth it um, Estelle's right, easy yo yogurt makers come up in the sh op shops all the time, $5. We picked one up for $2 for Hannah from an op shop um, all the time. Look for them all the time. And if you don't find one in an op shop, they are regularly on half price at both Woolworths and Coles. Um, Aldi have them twice a year, not the easy yo. I think they have the Hansel ones, just a different shape, does the same thing. Um, um, three liters for four dollars thank you maureen the cream was three liters for four dollars yeah because i was thinking i handed over eight dollars so yeah three liters for four dollars beautiful um Yeah, my NQR never had any at all. Um, yeah, no, Stella didn't have any at all. Didn't even have a spot for it, um, which was very, very upset. Well, that's all right. You don't need to see my face all the time, Estelle. I just put the comments up so that everyone can see what I'm talking about. Um, I'd be happy if someone gave me chops for Valentine's Day. There you go. I would be very happy if someone gave me chops for Valentine's Day. I like practical gifts. <laughs> um, it works. Um, okay. All right. Now, let me go back here. The other thing I am doing, seriously, seriously doing, is tracking the costs. Tracking my grocery prices. Tracking how much each shop is costing. Now, if you're doing the saving revolution, then you started tracking your groceries a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago. Well, I hope you did anyway. It is a, look, it's a smart thing to do anyway. But right now, so that I can see exactly how much things like things are costing, like if I'm going to suddenly find that we're $22 over budget, where did that $22 go? I want to track my prices so I can say, well, there you go. Cheese went up. Eggs went up. Um, widgets went up. That's where the extra went. How can, can we cut back on the cheese? Do we really need to buy widgets? I can work it out from there and so can you if you track your grocery budget. Now, I have it on the tracking spreadsheet. I have it broken down into categories so that I know how much each category I'm spending in each category too because again the budget blows out was it because I bought too much meat or did I just buy more expensive meat or cheese or was there soft drinks that we don't normally buy in there that sort of thing and your price book honestly guys I can't stress enough oops I can't stress enough how important your price book will be to you this year. It is going to be, it should be as important as your ATM card, your driver's license, your Medicare. It's important. It is vital that you know your prices so that you can see when things go up because there is still a sales cycle. It is not quite as good as we are used to it is not quite as um, uh, 
it's not quite as regular as we're used to. I used to be able to go with certain things. It was six weeks, six weeks, six weeks, six weeks in this store, six weeks in this store, but so there'd be a three week gap. So I'd know there'd only be three weeks where I'd have to wait if I missed out to get something on sale. It doesn't quite work like that anymore. It's very erratic and the sales aren't quite as good. Yeah, that's not quite as good. Even the half price sales on junk food just aren't quite as good as they have been. But it's really important to know that. You know, now I will make a note when we're finished here that Foodworks have legs of lamb for $9.99 a kilo. And I will go and check our Foodworks to see if they do. And if they do, I'll be there with bells on because I really want them. But it's important to know that because the cheapest I've seen is $16.99 and I'm not paying $16.99 for a leg of lamb and not $16.99 a kilo for a leg of lamb. I'm just not. It's not worth it to me to do that. So get your price book out. If you haven't updated it in a while, spend 15 minutes when we're finished here tonight online and just go through the top 10 things that you buy regularly and make sure that you know the prices at the supermarkets that you use and at the supermarkets you don't use because we are all going to have to start shopping a little differently and going to different places where we don't normally shop. I've started going to Woolworths guys. I, I've started going to Woolworths. Did you ever think you'd hear me say I'd be going to Woolworths? And it was only because Woolworths was always out of my way. But when prices are right, one week, I will make the trip to Woolworths. I will give the list to Wayne and I'll ask him if he's going past on his way to or from work and give the list to him and get him to pick it up for me so I don't have to make the trip. But I've started shopping at Woolies. I don't even like Woolies, but I've started shopping there. So... We have to do these things. The other thing that's really important is waste. I try really, really hard to have a no waste, a zero waste kitchen. But we still have a lot of waste. In fact, when I took the bag out to the bin tonight, I was thinking, how could I have this much in this bag when I only emptied it last night? Well, the boys filled it up with stuff. But I try really hard to have a zero waste kitchen. I don't use paper towel. We don't use tissues in our house. I use um, my dishcloths or tea towels. The potato peels, the carrot peels, things like that go to the worms. If you have chickens, I know Wendy yesterday was putting um, apricot bits that she'd cut up her apricots aside to go to her chickens. Um, now I'm picking potatoes or harvesting potatoes from our own garden. And by the way, if you are in Melbourne, you can plant potatoes starting now. February, we can, uh, January, February, we can start to plant potatoes for our zone. So some of the potatoes, if you saw last week, I had that bowl of potatoes. Some of them were quite small and a little green and I've put those aside in the hope that they will um, shoot and I will be planting those. They will be my seed potatoes. So I've given them a good scrub. Now I know my potatoes get no chemicals on them. I don't use chemicals in my garden at all. So there's no chemicals on them. So they get a good scrub. And when I was peeling a couple of the bigger ones, I sort of, instead of using the potato peeler, I did what my mum used to do and I got the paring knife and I sort of used the knife. I'm not very good at it because I've always used a veggie peeler. So it will take a bit of practice for me to get good at. And I made slightly thicker peels and I put them in a bowl of salty water. And then after dinner, I drained them and dried them. And I, I thought about um, putting them in the oven, but I didn't want to turn the oven on. So I put a little bit, a little tiny bit of oil in the bottom of my um, saute pan. 
just a little bit, probably about a centimetre. And I fried them until they were crispy and they were delicious. So I will be doing that again. I will be saving our potato peels. Um, when I peel potatoes, I don't often peel them, but when I do, I will be saving the potato peels and doing that with them. They were so good. Um, things like that. But I'm going to be thinking more too about um, making sure I use the spatula to scrape out the tin to get everything out of the tin. Because I'm sure I've told you that if you scrape out your peanut butter jar, you will get two or three or four more sandwiches if you use a spatula to scrape the jar out rather than just a knife. We need to be smarter about these things. The same with your jam jar. Although the blueberry jar that was emptied today, we um, I put milk into it and shook it up and made a milkshake. It was blueberry, yeah. It was nice actually. The milk was really cold and I just put it in the jar. I used to do that with the kids all the time. And give them a treat when the jam jar was almost empty. Fill it with milk, shake it up, give them a drink. It just means using things, using all of everything without wasting it. Um, your soap slivers, when your soap gets too small. Now, there's been some debate going on about this and all ways, talk about ways to use it. You can grate them to make your washing powder if you want to. Or you can grate them and dissolve them in water to make a liquid hand soap. Or you can grate them and melt them down with a little water and then reform them in moulds to make a new bar of soap. Or you can soften them up and just jam them on to the new cake of soap when you open it so that they're not wasted. Or you can put them into a soap sack and use them that way. You can use them for in the shower, in the bath. You can put them into a stocking and tie them to your garden tap to use for washing your hands when you've been outside. That's just a few ways you can use soap without wasting those little slivers because it might not seem much at the time, but every little bit costs you money. And if you're not using it all, then you are throwing money in the bin. And that's not being mean and it's not being miserly. It's just making sure you actually use and get what you pay for. And you don't need to be um, stingy about it. You just need to be, it's, it's part of what you do. You know, do it with style. We can, we can live the cheapskates way with class. We don't need to be um, cheap. We can be frugal without being cheap, if that makes sense. Um, what else have I got? I just jotted down a few things really quickly while the boys were eating their dinner. Okay. So that's three things that I'm doing to not um, not waste money, not spend more than I need to on our grocery budget, but to try and rein in the grocery budget because I'd really like to have a little wiggle room so that I can build up a slush fund that we'll talk about um, um, sometime in the future. So I'm stretching things. I'm tracking the cost of everything. And I'm wasting nothing. I'm stopping the waste. I'm doing as much as I can to stop the waste. Even to, look, I rinse out the milk bottle. When the milk bottle's empty, it gets water put into it, shake it up, and I pour that over the tomatoes because that tomatoes love calcium and that's just a little bit every day or so is perfect. It's not you know, overwhelming them and it it stops the blossom end rot. You know when the tomatoes get all and they drop off and they, they like tomatoes like calcium. So I pour it over the tomatoes and pour it over the house plants. And it works. Um, uh, Annabelle likes a slush fund. I like a slush fund too, Annabelle. Oh, it's such a nice feeling to know that you 
you can stock up without going over budget. Now, who is talking about... Um, Soap sacks. Here we go. Nope, nope, nope. Forever. Nope. Thought I had a soap sack here, but I haven't. So not to worry. I was going to show you a soap sack. Really easy. Oh, here we go. That's a crocheted face washer. But just there you go. Sew up the sides, put a thing through it, and that's your soap sack. How's that? Easy. Um Flannel bags will do them. A face washer, you can make a soap sack out of a face washer. Same thing. Sew up two sides, fold it in half, sew up two sides, tie a ribbon around it. That's your soap um, soap sack. Um, uh, alrighty. So... Um, Here we go. Beverly's tried potato peels with a peeler, teaspoon of oil, teaspoon of salt in the air fry for 15 minutes. Very good. They are um, so good, aren't they? So, so good. Okay. Uh, right. Potatoes from the garden tonight, two large plastic pots. I am so excited about the volunteer spuds that are coming up in the garden because, well, potatoes are rather expensive at the moment. Um, so, you know, growing your own, especially when they're free because they've come from the compost. Okay. And they, I think the ones I um, picked last week, harvested last week, are Dutch creams. They are so good. Um, so, so good. All right. All right. Um, I can try a soap making video for you, but I could try. Don't be afraid to make soap. It's not difficult. Soap making isn't difficult. Yes, there are some safety things that you have to follow, but that's just common sense anyway. So, all right, well, mm, I'll see what I can. I've got soap on my list to do for home over the next few weeks, so I'll see what I can do. But it's actually really simple, really, really simple. Not difficult at all. Um Vegemite, Promite, don't use Promite, use Vegemite and use Marmite. Um, and it actually makes a really nice hot drink in winter. A little bit of Vegemite in the jar, swish it with just a little bit of water, hot water, to get it out of the jar, put it into a mug, top it up with um, boiling water. It makes a really nice hot drink. I know, I know it sounds disgusting, but it is actually really nice. Um Estelle says potato is one of the easiest things to grow. Well, most things are easy to grow. It's just picking your time to plant them, knowing what grows well in your area, um, and remembering that they do need care. They do need care. So you either have to put the time and effort in in preparing the soil or you have to put the time and effort in 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 looking after them once they're planted so i don't spend a lot of time in actual gardening time but while i'm watering i'm looking and if i see a weed out it comes if i see some leaves that are need to come off off they come i'm you know picking the strawberries and the raspberries and the cucumbers and the zucchinis as i'm watering i'm not thinking, okay, I have to do weed, weeding on Sunday. And even though I see a weed on Wednesday, I, oh, I'm going to do the weeding on Sunday and leave it. I see it, I pull it out. Um, it's not a big job when you do that. It's not a huge job. It's like cleaning your house. If you do it 
regularly it's not a big job if you don't do it for a month it takes a weekend and it's awful so gardening's the same but know your zone now look garden garden australia um, diggers club um any of the garden websites will be able to tell you what zone you're in now according to diggers melbourne is a warm zone we are in a warm zone most of victoria is cool but melbourne the surrounding melbourne because we're on the bay it's a warm zone and we're relatively protected it's a warm zone so we plant for warm zone planting now i like diggers because they'll actually i'm sure the others do too but they actually have a calendar for your zone and it will tell you what to plant in january and in february and in march and in april and in may so that you know what to plant and what will grow in your zone um then it just um makes it easy for you i like to grow from seed i'm really enjoying growing from seed i had slightly better luck growing from seed and i think i get to choose you get a better variety when you grow from seed it takes a little bit longer but it's much much cheaper you know three dollars for a packet of seed as opposed to five or six dollars for four plants from the nursery so it's much cheaper um, um, all right now tofu i've never thought of making tofu i like ellie's soap channel her soap channel is very good i've not watched the sourdough one um but tofu yeah oh now i'm going to have to try it now you just wasted some more time for me delaney i'm going to do research that's what i'm doing research into making tofu because march is moo month um bonox yeah as a savory winter drink rather than vegemite um we had marmite because that's what we had in the house when we were growing up but now i give the kids veggie vegemite um gardenate yes that's another one um Jane can't grow potatoes, but she can grow sweet potatoes. I love sweet potato. Okay. All right. So three things I'm doing. They are making they are making a difference, even to my grocery budget. They're making a difference. So if you are struggling or if you think you are going to be struggling with your grocery budget this year, and I'm pretty sure we're all going to be at least finding that we might need to put more into it where is that money going to come from at least think about um, stretching what you have everything because every cent that you don't spend on something is a cent that you have to spend on something else and track track the costs track your spending and you might notice that there's areas where you can cut back you might not have realized that you were spending so much on on widgets and you can cut back on them if you don't do it you won't know and aim for zero waste and I know that's easier said than done and I don't do that because I particularly want to be um, green or anything I think that the way we live is green anyway but because I hate putting my money in the bin, I hate working so hard to earn it just to put it in the bin. That's what we do. Okay. A widget, isn't the widget the little thing that goes on the end of the shoelace? I'm pretty sure that's what a widget is. 
like it's just a word I threw out there so that I couldn't I didn't want to upset anyone by saying cheese or eggs or shampoo or whatever so I just said widgets but you know I'm pretty sure a widget is the little thing that the little plasticky thing that goes on the end of the shoelace okay thank you for sticking with me so long 87 people watching yes I would really appreciate a thumbs up if you haven't already given me one because they actually help our channel to be found more easily and of course the easier it is for people to find us the easier it is for us to tell them that it is absolutely perfectly okay to live life debt free cashed up and laughing and you can still do it even in today's crazy crazy mixed up world um, feel free to leave a comment in the comments below me or in live chat which will disappear in a minute um, that would be really really good I do my best to answer all your questions I read every comment now if I miss them it's not deliberate I'm sorry so if you've got a question all capitals might help if you know someone who might like this video or who might like to know about the cheapskates club we're a great friendly bunch click the share button and send them the link because there's three simple things like subscribe and share that they really help our channel to grow and that's what we want it to do and of course don't forget to go tell your friends that they need to subscribe because they all have, all they have to do is hit that subscribe button and they will be in the running to win that dehydrator because you just have to be subscribed you don't have to do anything else okay oh look I haven't run too much over tonight I will be back next week with another video showing you how to live life debt free cashed up and laughing but until then happy cheap skating everyone stay safe and have a great week bye, -bye.